Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. Please don't forget to subscribe to our text message alert system that allows you to get this and all of our information, all of our fabulous shows right in the palm of your hand on your cell phone by simply texting the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to the number 88202. Push send, count to three or four. You'll have us subscribed on your phone. It's absolutely free forever. Today's guest, a special friend of the family, an ATP contributor that we're very proud of, Claire Lopez is back. Claire is the founder of Lopez Liberty LLC. She writes constantly on issues of national security because, well, she's an expert, having been uh, in service to our government for many years, both uh, at the State Department and CIA and other posts. She is our expert. Claire, thanks for coming on today. And thank you, Barry. Always glad to be back with you and ATP. Let's start out with the unbelievable news this week. Virginia, which is basically a blue state, um, don't believe the people that say it's purple. The Dems uh, outregister the Republicans by a significant majority. The GOP swept Virginia. There's a new governor, a new lieutenant governor, and a new attorney general, all Republican in a state that this should not have happened in. The Dems brought out all the big hitters, Claire. Obama was there. Biden came. Kamala Harris. They brought in some rock stars. Biden predicted a big victory. Kamala said the results will have major ramifications in 2022 and 2024 and thereafter. And even in spite of all of that celebrity and political endorsements, all the big GOP won and the Dems lost. Why did McAuliffe go down and Youngkin win in Virginia? Well, a few thoughts. Uh, many of us were up very late last night uh, for us here on the East Coast, uh, waiting for results to come in. It, uh, it came down to um, a close finish, um, a spread of about 2%. But uh, the, the couple comments. I mean, the first thing I would say is I think that Virginia makes a very good example in microcosm, state level microcosm of why the United States of America has an electoral college. Because when you look at the map of Virginia and how the counties in Virginia went uh, yesterday in the voting between Democrat Terry McAuliffe uh, and Republican who eventually won, uh, Glenn Youngkin, the map of Virginia is a sea of red, meaning for the Republicans. Big population centers in the Northern part of the state close to Washington DC, counties like Fairfax County, Arlington County, Alexandria, uh, these are the blue area strongholds, big population, strong Democratic affiliation, Democrat Party affiliation, and then also some Democrat Party uh, strongholds to the south uh, east in the states. But the whole rest of the state is red. But what happened? Why did this happen? Um, a, a couple of things. Glenn Youngkin um, is a businessman. He comes from the outside. He's not a politician. He comes across as very grounded, very sincere, very feet on the ground, practical, pragmatic solutions. He also kept the race uh, all about Virginia and all about what Virginians care about, uh, especially the parents uh, of students in Virginia. And that would be education. Uh, it would be the, uh, the teaching of critical race theory in the schools, obviously the economy for sure, um, but other things too. And it was all about Virginia, whereas his opponent, uh, Democrat Party candidate, uh, Terry McAuliffe, as you say, Barry brought in all the big guns at, from the national level, which did not go over well, did not go over well at all uh, in Virginia. I don't necessarily agree that Virginia is a blue state. Yes, it flipped blue in uh, statewide elections for the last, what, 10 years or 12 years or something like that. Uh, but when you look at the actual makeup of the state, I think there's a lot more red uh, Republican Party sentiment. And don't forget the independents, the independents um, who, who broke 
for Republicans this this election cycle and uh, a lot of Democrat parents who formerly voted Democrat pretty reliably. But when they came for their kids, that was the line. That was yeah, the last red line. You make an interesting point. I, I think back to 2020 when they listed the counties won by Trump versus the counties across the country won by Biden. The map was so red, the blue was just dots. And mm -hmm. I can't imagine all those red counties. I mean, it was a ridiculous avalanche. Um, if, if we abandon the process we've had since 1776 with the Electoral College, all of those red places would be significantly, if not completely disenfranchised. Talk about New Jersey. You know, mm. it's not decided yet. It may not be decided for days. It was supposed to be a massive landslide for the incumbent Democrat. And there's this upstart Republican that it's the race is virtually tied. And the Democrats significantly, dramatically outregister Republicans in the state. Is this also about CRT? and parents being able to affect their children's education that has this race so close? Well, I mean, here we are, Barry, uh, Eastern time um, in the, uh, the afternoon of the day after the election. And yeah, they're not done counting in New Jersey. It is literally neck and neck, something like within a thousand votes, one of the other, the incumbent Phil Murphy, Governor uh, Murphy, and the challenger, Siratelli. Um, and we don't know yet how that's gonna play out. Um, a couple of um, issues that I didn't mention with regard to Virginia, but could have, should have maybe, and they do affect the New Jersey race as well. And uh, that obviously has to do with lockdowns, uh, with, with um, mandates, vaccine mandates, uh, with masking mandates, especially for the children, which is absolutely ludicrous and useless and has no meaning whatsoever. Um, and those things, those issues are playing out in New Jersey. We'll still have to wait a while to get the results. Well, speaking about goofball elections, this is my favorite. I, when I use that favorite, um, Ilhan Omar is the most un-American, possibly anti-American congressperson ever to sit in the esteemed House of Representatives. She was bragging yesterday, Claire, that she voted in a referendum that they had in Minneapolis to defund the Minneapolis Police Department, actually eliminate the police department and come up with this social engineering counseling gobbledygook thing that would make all the crime go away. Uh, thank goodness for Minneapolis, that referendum was soundly defeated. Um, and the surprise to people like Ilhan Omar that considers herself a Black Lives Matter advocate. According to exit polls, Claire, the, the Black community turned out largely to vote against this idiotic proposal because they want the cops yeah. uh, on the street to enforce the laws. Is, is, is Omar taking these absurd political positions ever going to affect her career, Claire, in a negative way? Well, I mean, we, we have to wait and see, but I would say it looks like uh, the American people are waking up. And it's precisely within some of these minority communities of cities like Minneapolis uh, that, that the worst crime is, is, is uh, occurring. And in particular, in the wake of defunding of police, resignations, uh, lack of new recruitment to police forces, and then this absurd um, ballot measure that was to have abolish the Minneapolis uh, city police force and uh, replaced it with some kind of social, uh, I don't know, social intervention force or something. Um, lots of counseling, we, lots of counseling. Lots of counseling, there you go. But it, you know, it, it, it is exactly the people that um, Ilhan Omar claims to represent who I think were the ones who elected her to Congress in the first place, but they're the ones feeling the worst effects of gang violence, gun violence, killing within their communities. And 
they don't want that to go on. They want the police back to bring order to their to their streets. Well, thank goodness they showed up or they wouldn't have police by the end of the year. So good on them. Although it strikes me as very bizarre that some 40 something percent of the electoral uh, turnout in Minneapolis voted for it. I don't know what they thought they were voting for, but God help them had they won. Uh, let's talk about Israel for a second. The Biden administration has taken a bizarre twist uh, to what the Trump policy was vis-a-vis -vis Israel. And they're pressuring Israel to allow the United States to establish a consulate for the Palestinians in Jerusalem, separate and outside the US embassy, which means for many Israelis, they would consider that uh, an American endorsement of the bifurcation of the city mm -hmm. again, which was united after the 67 war. Um, I, I don't understand why there's not more of an outcry within the party, within the Jewish community, within uh, the American community uh, uh, overall saying, hey, let's not do business with terrorists. This is insane. What are your thoughts? Well, exactly. It's insane, but it's also very deliberate and calculated. Um, the uh, many, many of the same individuals um, now in the Biden administration um, uh, were also previously uh, in the Obama administrations. And uh, they are not big fans of uh, the Jewish state of Israel, unfortunately. And odd as it may seem, a lot of American uh, Jewish uh, communities also are not big supporters of Israel because they've thrown their support, I mean, for, for decades and even generations behind uh, the Democrat party uh, in the United States they follow blindly whatever it does. And that includes some of the major Jewish organizations and congregations in America. But very quickly, what that proposal by the Biden administration uh, to establish a separate consulate in Jerusalem means um, is a visible um, uh, example of how to uh, once again, divide Jerusalem and, and make a statement on the ground uh, that uh, the, you know, the, the, the Palestinian Authority out of Ramallah has some claim on Jerusalem. Of course, uh, there is an embassy, a U.S. embassy in Jerusalem, and with such an embassy come uh, consular services, passports, and U.S. citizen, uh, you know, s services. Um, and if, if, if an administ American administration or any other uh, wanted to establish a consulate to serve, um, you know, the uh, Palestinian Authority people, they would establish that consulate in Ramallah, um, not in Jerusalem. Yeah, um, you're making you're making the same point I am, and thank you for pointing yeah. that out. They have no claim there. They no. are established in Ramallah, and that's where the consulate should be. Right. By putting it in Jerusalem, it's a big middle finger to the Israeli government. And I'm sad the Biden administration sounds like Obama light with, well, as it, you said, the same people. It, it, it is ultimately under international law up to the receiving the host uh, country government to either accept and approve or disapprove any establishment of any diplomatic facility uh, on, their, on their territory. Um, and so and Israel, Israel said no so far. Good on them. So far, they're holding fast. Yeah. Claire, where can people find out about you? Well, um, I am uh, published uh, videos like this one uh, at American Truth Project, of course. Uh, you can receive um, cell phone text message notices about videos like this if you uh, text my name, L O P E Z, to 88202 and get those notices. Uh, every time I post a video like this one. I'm also uh, published at the uh, Citizens Commission on National Security at the United West. Also, the Jamie Glazoff gang videos at the David Horowitz Freedom Center uh, and published there also, Front Page Magazine. Oh, and I'm also on social media uh, at Claire M. Lopez on Twitter. Same, my name uh, on Facebook and Lopez Liberty on Telegram. So for our viewers out there that haven't figured it out, all she does is produce content 
24 seven. This woman never sleeps, but check her out. We endorse her and we follow her too. Thanks for joining us today on ATP Report. Thanks to Claire. Thanks to you. I'm Barry Newsbaum. 